Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're watching and listening to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Today, my very special guest is old friend Evie Lorgan. Evie really doesn't need any introduction. She's a veteran in our field and a person that I'm um, proud to have as a, as a dear friend and longtime colleague. So without any further ado, Evie Lorgan, welcome back to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Thank you, James. It's always good to talk to you again, and um, I'm so glad that um, we're able to do this. It's, yes. Well, you know, prior to this show and then exchanging uh, messages back and forth, there was a number of topics you wanted to delve into. There's so much going on, but uh, we're going to take a, a step up uh, instead of not necessarily ignoring or uh, you know minimizing all the stuff going on in the surface world. There's a lot of things going on, have been going on in the deep black world, in the ET world. So I, I think that you know, it's timely that we start delving into those subjects again. So however you want to go with it, it's fine with me. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Um, well, in terms, I, you know, I've come across things in my practice with people either in groups or individually. And so and most of the things over time have been people have been um, perplexed by some kind of a romantic relationship that they knew was, um, you know, beyond the norm, uh, manipulated or paranormal, supernatural that involved elements that were traumatic and um, maybe certain positive things on some ends, but ultimately it was very, it was destructive because there was a, you know, the, um, the alien or the alien demonic element of the vampiric narcissistic quality of some people. So I run into that and I run into uh, more satanic ritual abuse and those who are like severely targeted because that's sometimes I'm their last resort. So sometimes it's difficult, but on, on the good end of this is learning um, really how to get the finer nuances of understanding complex trauma and using some really standard, good, basic therapeutic strategies to help uh, calm the complex trauma so that they're able to get through some of the more difficult elements that are all happening all at the same time and to understand their experience. Because I think many people don't really understand their experience. And this is why it causes so much confusion and trauma. And I don't know if I should just pause there because there's an element of what I call, I mean, I hate to for lack of a better term, let's say the diabolical energetic um, species and their flying monkeys, they employ a level of not only trauma and creating chaos, but a form of madness, a form of madness that doesn't make sense to the normal psychology of a normal person who's not a psychopath or a demonically hosted whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, as in I have to consult the uh a biologist to decide, you know, what side of the department store to go find my clothes at nowadays, you know, but please continue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it's something that I realized is a strategy so that what we're, what we're dealing with is a, a non-human type of species that is driven by demonic, diabolical, vampiric um, energies, frequencies, entities, that will deliberately employ the chaos, the drama, the energy loose feeding, the vampirization, and creating madness, trauma, and torture to um, achieve their ends of control, co-opting, perverting, inverting, and basically just harvesting um, life force energy and, and utilizing whoever they can capture into that um, compulsion. And it is a compulsion that is predatorial. And that's that's it in a nutshell, what I see. But I think the part that is difficult for people is, is like the constant kind of confusion about it all and wanting to make sense of it, but not being able to, to get a resolution in their mind to make sense of, you know, why did this happen to me? And how come it's happening this way? And wanting to understand that person and, uh, or the, the narcissist or the psychopath or the one that was used kind of like as a handler, depending on that person's um, function. Like uh, if they're a my lab or if they're an abductee waking up or if they're a runaway from a hierarchy Illuminati family, and their programming, then they will get targeted by some of these more lethal relationship uh, neutralizers, which you know, right? I mean, in some of these love bite things. 
Although I have heard just recently, and I, I just mentioned to this before the show, and it's an interview with uh, Johan Fritz and Jody, his wife, by Aaron and Tyler of Journey to Truth podcast, or actually YouTube. And they mentioned because they are both super soldier people, like SSP project people, who realized that they were involved together, actually, and they were pre-bonded as children, as far as I understand it. But the term that Johan used was, um, they called it, well, when they pair you and twin you with your divine counterpart. And I've heard this mentioned a few times, but then there's no reference to a little more details of, well, does this ever really not work out well? And does it work out well only when both those people are recovered and no longer accessed in the programs and have done their complex trauma recovery work and the deprogramming and the any deliverance work? Because in my experience, most of the ones that we might have been paired with, um, it only worked within the program. And then if, if something happened in, in regular waking life and you met the person, it could, would turn into one of these classic love bite situations which was usually um, trauma driven or programming driven or entity driven for what looked like the usual, kind of like a narcissistic um, love bombing devaluation and discard type of cycle, you know? So it just made me wonder, you know, if there's something good going on, that's great. Um, but right now what I see is that the complex trauma must be recovered over time to get have healthier relationships that really are divine you know i don't know if you there see a couple of aspects to that uh, that come to mind the divine pairing or twinning uh, that um, you referred to a moment ago within the context of these these projects they could only be meant for a finite period of time that they want to use these people together to generate whatever louche uh, allow one or each of the participants, if you want to call them participants, because they're not really voluntary. Uh, yes. To, you know how, when you're around certain people, when in the context of a my lab experience, sometimes you draw out abilities, capabilities of the other person. Uh, yes. Which is, we talked about this before, how they like to get people involved in these projects males and females pair them up because they take risks for each other they within the context of the experiences to be sure there's alter personalities um, involved at times but there is some level of love bonding protectiveness to one another so this tends at times in periods of, of duress and stress and high high anxiety to manifest these abilities to help them get out, get out of problems yeah. uh, and I think that's an issue uh, that needs to be delved into also. And, and also the fact that the, um, the, the, the trauma, like you said, you know, the, the source of it needs to be uh, resolved because we're seeing it just in the surface world, the, the steady bombardment of, uh, of anxiety, of trauma, of fear, it adds to a level of anxiety already mm -hmm. existing within these people, right? It already adds a cumulative effect of all this stress that, that my labs in our example are already undergoing. That can lead to all kinds of issues, physical maladies, illnesses, et cetera, to just trying to uh, keep on an even keel despite all the stuff going on just in the surface world so there's no relief right I know. go to sleep they access things happen to them they wake up and they find themselves in this world again where all this stuff is going on yeah yeah well i wouldn't disagree with you there it seems like that's part of the program as well i mean i've heard people who are pretty aware in their own process of awakening who have been in programs by the way and that their their belief is that there are you know there's like a ministry of magic that that there's the elite let's say the ones who are the the I don't want to say non-human who look human but the ones who are driven by let's say the psychopathic vampiric um, alien consciousness in human bodies that um, 
they need our creation abilities, right? So that they will want to create as many distractions and our focused attention and energy on what they want to create. So they use us to carry out their own rebirth process in this reset situation. And so we have to be careful, like what news we're hearing, even though it may be true, but just constantly being imbued with a lot of the negativity helps actually feed their creation. So it's it's like we have to find a way to not be triggered, which is hard, right? Not be triggered by so much of what we're hearing, which there's a lot of bad things out there going on and not be triggered by that so that, that doesn't feed their their loose and their creation process. Of course, it's easier said than done because I think it takes a foundation of safety and a bit of love and security to even heal from complex PTSD. And I will say that, you know, even in my life, it's been very, very hard to, to have all those things together in a foundation that's strong enough to actually go to that higher level of consciousness. Um, you know, and I, all the power to the people who are really doing it. Uh, but I just think it's harder than what they say. I just think there's a lot of programming going on where they think they're lucid, but it's like a false awakening. But maybe that's just my uh, opinion, which well, kind of goes to, well, I don't, I'll let you go please ahead. Please continue, please continue. Well, actually, I was going to the next um, idea that we were going to discuss, which is part of why I want to do another group that may we may focus more on the exploration of uh, dream work, recognizing archetypes and programming, and when there's accessing and hacking on the more subtle levels of consciousness so that we could use, you know, dream awareness, lucidity, and exploration um, to find out what's going on on those more subtle levels of accessing and programming. Because with one person that I'm working with, who's been a longtime colleague and um, someone that I've interviewed, the, the Scandinavian woman, she's gotten to really good levels of awareness in her dream consciousness, as well as a regular awareness, because she's already like a starfire kind of um, lineage, which is why they took her and, and experimented on her and just, you know, hunted her down, basically. So she's come to understand things that actually connect with some of the things that Pierre Sabak, that you have interviewed, had talked about in terms of the archetypal root syntax word meanings and how those symbols will come up in one's own consciousness that reveal uh, truths. So it will come in in a kind of symbolic way. So what she found is that there's her own subconscious things that she will recognize when these beings will try to even access her. And then they have, they take a certain form and symbol when they do. <clears throat> so in her case, because she's a starfire and one of the originals who is, I think that's what they're hunting down is they're wanting to use the originals and then try to clone them or um, hijack their power to use for creators, so to create things for them. For our purposes so, here, could you define what Starfire is? I'm not really familiar um, with the term. Well, I mean, this was one of the things that was, I think even uh, Arizona Wilder talked about this and some of the earlier people who claim that um, they are from certain lineages that um, has to do with menstrual blood and utilizing a certain type of blood line. Oh, yes, that, that's yeah. Starfire. Yes, I remember now as well because you know it's it's all about the blood and certain kind of i think it has to do with a creative power that's inherent in the spirit soul frequency of people in certain bloodlines where in the females in their blood in particular is more powerful for creation so and and that they may have a some people call it the isis gene i don't know who who said that, or if it was Pierre Sabak, because he had symbology in some of his presentations that go back to the Starfire lineage and some of the symbols used in ancient paintings, which it's basically the same thing that has been hunted down. So in my client, what she sees, and this is something that we um, tend to want to cultivate to create, to create the purity of perception for discernment of what's hacking into our consciousness, even on these subconscious levels that we're not really aware of. So, and she just called it original awareness. So that would be what is original and eternal in us that will break through in a more powerful way to um, 
give us the truth of any situation or any experience, as long as we're not too triggered to allow distortions to come in. So she's using her original awareness to find out, you know, what is the root of this system on earth where they, you know, they would hunt down these originals that were often representative by certain females or certain males from certain constellations that would come and hunt them down. So they would come sometimes in the form of a wolf or dark men or from the boot, boots constellation she mentioned. And there's different things that she found, like even the hare, H-A-R-E, the rabbit was another symbol that would keep coming up. So she just noticed how um, certain aliens would um, do things in, in a dreamlike uh, reality. So maybe it would be in the astral where they would be collecting things like these black pearls. And, uh, and the black pearl would be a type of energy, uh, original energy from certain people. And then they would use these black pearl balls to you know, power themselves and their own sorceries. So what's interesting is even the black pearl is used in some Taoist Qigong alchemical processes where the black pearl is the, the yin pearl that is like the closest route to the non-dual energy of life that comes into this reality. So it has its own symbol that is that is a good symbol, but then, then they, they will take this. So I guess, um, I don't know where I was going with this, but just the recognition of the archetypes and the language syntax that would come up, regardless of really your language, um, it would tend to reveal what's going on or the intention behind someone. So for example, with this person, and this has happened to many that I've come across who are a certain lineage, okay? So they, if they don't try to get them caught up in one love bite kind of situation, you know, another one will be on the hind end of that. So they'll try to set them up with one person and then she will see like what was driving that person and how it was part of an alien um, direction, like a interdimensional uh, interference kind of thing. And then so she would see how this would happen one after the other. They would keep sending her those kinds of partners because they were already run by the hunters. Well, they're like hunters. So I just think it's really interesting that the level of the, the depth of awareness that one must go to and the, the resilience and the determination to not get captured or bonded again with one of these um, neutralizers because they're just, there's so many more of them, it seems like. In fact, I think I wanna read an excerpt she did because it was something that I thought was interesting because it connects with the whole transgender programming thing, which is part of the elites program, but it has to do with something. Let me, let me go and see if I could find it and then I'll, I'm gonna read it if I could find it on here. Um, okay, I'm just gonna read you what, what she stated. I thought that was interesting. Um, about the archetype. And these are the archetypes that would show in her dreams. In dreams, these hunters are always black, dark males. And their archetype could be Helios, Apollo, Ammon, Zeus, Osiris, including all those slender gods with lightning. So these males are hidden behind a facade, facade? Uh, I don't know if I said that word right, with multiple faces, facade, yeah. They are connected to religious brotherhoods with military ties like the Jesuits, Knights of Malta, etc. During early days, there were priests in Egypt who took over the religious life and changed into monotheism. In dreams, they are hares. The etymology of means ill tread. Um, hares, wolves, wounded males, pirates, sea vampires, and they are men in these archetypes. Race, my inner able go figure. <laughs> of this race, Okay, the, the dark males were the hunters who um, invaded planet of the, the originals of this race of ones are all clones from here on earth. Now, this is interesting. I think it's back to the elite. These are the ones who are all rid of the originals who are shift here, like the original female, original humans of the original primordial awareness, mostly the transgender. Gender. And then she gives me an article on wolves and the wolf cult and the root things that 
are to the constellation Bute and the wolf Lycaon. So there's a connection there. Um, so I, I just want to mention that because I couldn't remember it off my head. But interesting is that uh, another client who you know has um, very good awareness or buoyance. One of the things she noticed was the the men always would come after her um, who were associated with certain uh, of those, type, what do you call it, Luciferian cult organs. Um, I won't say free, but it could be any any of those that are run by the Luciferian entities that they have an ability to do the Tanji capture thing. And they tend to add that, but they would always send their people after who was one of the originals who could see all this stuff like blatant. She could see which people socially. She also mentioned this stuff about, um, I mentioned this on your show. So if I'm repeating myself, <laughs> but it, to the artificial intelligence of cell phones and some other things that she, especially since this thing um, started increased with a lot of being a lot more grays but more of the inner darker types and their henchmen they're they're flying monkeys who were in let's just put it that way she she actually saw i mean I, i'm gonna read because um there's mention of this by that um i've come across the sessions um let's see like a simple Explanation. Okay. Do you mean favor, Evie? Uh, for the moment, turn off your uh, your, your webcam. Uh, Is my internet unstable? Yeah, yeah. Just just like last time, when we were getting into the serious issues. We got all this interference, so we'll just go <laughs> for a little. Happens, like... We'll just go for a little while without your webcam, and then so hopefully your audio comes through really good. So should I repeat anything I said that was um, heard? Yeah, you might want to go over and you know, just summarize what you just spoken of. Um, but but go ahead and, and turn off your, your webcam just to well, see if you have a better connection. Yeah. You want me to take my webcam so we have better Yeah, try it. Go ahead and turn off your webcam and, and see how it turns out. See if you see if you get better okay, audio. And then I'm gonna read you. Yeah, okay. Okay. So um, I'm gonna talk about the AI she was able to see clear that's coming off of like stones and other things um let's see she started seeing blue light objects which seem monitor her and black dots that emerge and forth in the air black clover like objects fall that still appear in the air and to move towards me for act and i think it comes from the smart the the cell phones um else it's like there's an eye capture so something that happens when you view the phone with your eye it does something to capture your essence energy to pull it into like there's there's actually something going on um let's see if i find it uh I, cell phones are being used against us in our eyes perhaps a cat mode in some way are reading texts or email. One of the reasons why I try my cell phone is because each time I use my phone to check texts, even online, my eyesight slows down a bit more. Um, and she starts to see a, a, some type of dull, opaque light object which was into her eyes. So there's something there that I think part of the black mirror technology that's being utilized with smart phone where there's something transmitted and gunked up on our energy field as a result of some of these devices so she was able to actually clarify this where maybe most people perceive this thing so in the last like she was ear buzzing before a reptilian which that kind of thing and my, my internet unstable again did you hear what i said um your internet is unstable again yeah, my gets unstable whenever I, uh, well, it's that time of day. <laughs> anyway, so the technology definitely is connected to something 
um, I have principality of the air, um, whatever it is. There's something there, and then uh, something else came up, and, and I saw an interview with the Johan Fodi on the uh, Tyler show, with astral spiders, and and this had come up with with the uh, where the spiders would show a function with like heavy target. So what was interesting, and I don't know if you've heard this interview yet or heard from others. Um, there's a type of like astral where if there's an intentional or vortex kind of thing being in a certain physical location, one of the things that might pop up is spiders. And that when happens, this was what uh, and uh, Johan were talking about, all, that then there would be chaos erupting like in the building where this thingy was being, where they could see these astral spheres. But another I heard about the spiders, because um, I watch a lot of these, that, that woman named Flubra, uh, the black woman from Caribbean, where she saw a bunch of the high program spiders. And it's actually a, it's like a female hive spider, where it's actually a, a type of being that functions through that um, symbol of the spider. If you've heard this before like experiences when the spiders? Yeah, the various um, descriptions. Uh, some people, when they were children, Kim Russell was on my show and she talked about as a little girl, she'd see these big spiders start crawling, you know, from the foot of her bed, you know, up towards where she was, or her head was oh. laying down. And then she would get terrified, scream. Yeah. And then her mother would come into the room and turn the light on and nothing would be there. And then she'd... Mm -hmm be reassured by her mother and this is nothing you just say, having a bad dream go back to sleep turn off the yeah. lights and yeah. then the spiders show up again right and i, I spoke to another uh, person this is an, an, a gal that had gone through a lot of project stuff for, as well <clears throat> not that kim did but this other gal i'm talking to you uh, referring to now she said in some of her experiences these large what seem to be interdimensional mm -hmm. spiders would be inhabiting the branches and the leaves of, of trees near her window her bedroom yeah. window and they could do mind speak they could telepathically talk to her right which is pretty creepy so the the archetype of the spider be it interdimensional or in an ai mode uh that has a deep-seated um revulsion <clears throat> excuse me revulsion type of response uh, an archetypal soul level with, within us, right? Similar to, to snakes having this deep-seated um, archetypal response um, that is engendered within us. The spider things, the spider bots, um, I think Miles Johnston calls them scholars, or maybe that's a variation of them. But definitely people have seen that have the etheric third eye vision, they've seen these spider thingies somehow working through involved with digital technology and increasingly we're hearing, hearing more of the octopi uh, of various sizes octopus beings coming out of um, you know digital devices and scale them up to huge octopus beings in enclosures on, on big space stations right that seem to have this job of the hut kind of role of being some kind of big godfather amongst amongst negative ets but, but please continue of um instability like the inner and i can hear some of what you said it's just i don't know if the vision is funky on your side but yes these things will show up in different forms really you know the bottom line for me is how can people recover from their complex trauma just have a better clarity of what's really happening in so, the things that um, client Marie interviewed so many times, I think that there is something in collective unconscious of entity that has basically infected by the inversion.
version of whatever um, predators and that we have a full subconscious mind that also something that happens in the gray unconscious and then I thought affects us. And so just recognizing what that is and the unnaturalness of it, because all recovery, when, when we were trying to, let's say, access, it's always about primordial and natural that bypasses all the other uh, narrative programming that is embedded just about in every culture and every religion been infected by these predator higher archetypes so yeah from that takes takes you know and that's why i want to do a uh, group other things like to that you hear me all right? Like when I talk, do I come across relatively clear or is it somewhat yeah, it's, choppy? It's a little bit echoey, but I just leave the camera off and speak slowly. It it's usually like the an excitement of the and then it gets funny. <laughs> but that's fine. that's fine. Yeah, this is the second time in a row that this has happened between you and I. Uh the, I know. The, the AI is coming more and more to the fore, which is, to me, clearly alien, archontic, demi-urgent, yes. if that's a word. Yeah. And yes. they just had to wait. And to them, you know, linear time is nothing because they can go in and out of linear time. They just had to wait, quote unquote, for a time here on Earth when the technology would advance to the point where working through their hybridized entity infested luciferian technicians and engineers and scientists they can come up with all of this stuff uh, so uh, increasingly we're seeing the the borgification of society yes. and also the the rents and the tears between separating that should rightly separate dimensions separate realms and worlds are being increasingly torn asunder. Uh, I think that is one of the Say big, that. I, I think that more and more gaps and tears are being created in the fabric of reality to allow more and more of these entities to come through. And at some level, mm -hmm. they may interface with the operating systems, for lack of a better term, that so many people have been administered with, if you know what I mean, right? Uh, there does seem to oh. be a ghost in the machine aspect. Uh, yes. A malevolent spirit animating this technology. And that was deliberate. Yes. Yeah. You even notice the, I telepathically, <clears throat> strongly in certain areas, mirrors actually, certain ways that you can do it more clearly. But what's disturbing is if there's all this telepathic jamming where I think, oh, this is their own thoughts and really like um, not necessarily one's own. And to be able to discern, I think dream work and meditation and really getting to know your own heart is important. Um, you can get, you know, telepathic downs and this and that, but you have to be, I think, and what we're listening to and how to learn like the root word me and the and what's through and uh, i just it's a large part action going on i mean with every club who's let's say awakening or escaping from program kind of family that's with that high level they they get targeted quite badly point of like you know, and um, you won't want to let them go. They'll they'll just target socially so that you never get a social group. And um, you know, your landlord, everybody in your environment is their networking, gang neutralization kind of for everyone. But how much effort they will certain individuals.
I don't know if you've noticed that. Not certain individuals. It's like, why? Yes. And th there's no let up. When they got them on the back foot, the people on the receiving end of all this harassment, gaslighting, gang stalking, it's like they put the pedal to the metal. They want to break that person. They want to drive that person into the ground. Um, if they're not already split off from previous trauma, just the stress, yeah. the everyday stress of dealing with, on top of all the stuff going on in the surface world already. Yeah. Hammer them with all of the gaslighting and targeted individual crap and the electromagnetic beaming. Uh, it's, it's sadistic, it's cruel, but, but it's par for the course. It, it's when they have their sights fixed on their quarry, they really switch into this predatory mode. And because of the internet of things, because of the interconnectivity, not only because people had a spiritual genetic predisposition to momentarily being taken up by this demiurge spirit and working through them, um, continuing the rant that the last um, you know, crazy person on the street said to the targeted individual, and then they run into another person uh, later in the day, and then the same spirit saying the same, continuing the same rant through the through a different person. Uh, it, it's like you said earlier. It's it induces a state of um, animalistic fear, of madness, uh, feverish anxiety, if you will, and I think that especially now with the the internet of things, the uh, the operating systems working through so many people and the ghost in the machine aspect to it, the demiurge spirit working through the technology itself, I think it's designed to do that, right? I think when they really crank up the, the added bandwidth, let's say, right? Uh, I think that we're gonna see a level of, of across the board, a Borg, uh, activity, gang stalking. We're already seeing that because it's it's taught, indoctrinated in the schools with the social yeah. justice warrior mentality, what have you. But when we have that rollout, when they really kick it in the high gear, and then the uh, the operating systems, graphene, etc., that's already yeah. inside so many people begins. Mm -hmm. And I, from what I understand, is watching. Uh, recent podcast discussions, not only does uh, uh, the graphene uh, self-assemble mm -hmm. when it's exposed to certain EMF, they start to increase in volume, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Upwards of 30% of the original. So yes, I, I think that anything is possible at this point, uh, yeah. literal zombie, kind of outbreaks yeah. uh, and it, it would be designed to be the straw that breaks the camel's back, if you will. It's full spectrum dominance. All the archetypal fears that people have had that have been fostered by cinema, all these zombie movies, all these, uh, all these um, plague movies, et cetera, et cetera, they're coming to life and it hooks these people in even before all these treatments were rolled out at a deep archetypal level, because they've been put into this mass hypnosis, hypnosis state, this, this mass uh, splitting off trauma state because yeah, yeah. of their addiction to digital devices, such as televisions, yeah. to their phones, what have you. So yeah, it's what, like, yeah. The, it's like, oh. there's a, I don't mean to interrupt, but oh, please, it's please. almost like um, there's a lack of discernment on the root beingness, original awareness that gets covered up by the preponderance of technology and certain kinds of conceptual thinking and mental manipulation, um, for lack of a better term. And that's, that's kind of scary because then people don't really know what their original awareness is. Um, and that's, that's why we want 
that's why we want to do the dream work so that we get we really cultivate and strengthen that original awareness so that there is a distinction and an understanding to know when those um, archetypal and those ahrimanic, it's actually ahrimanic forces through technology and the predatorial species working through it so that we could discern and we can, you know, basically dispel its power uh, before it becomes a problem. But I think that, you know, this is something even that, that Barbara Barthlick, our mentor, who, you know, my beloved Barbie, because she has actually helped me beyond the grave several times where I know that what she spoke was truth and that she truly did help me in certain um, harassment and targeting times. And, and just to interject very quickly, don't lose that thought. This nonsense going out that, oh, a channeler said that Barbie's stuck in this reptilian nether dimension, she's being tormented. Uh, That's nonsense. Okay. Oh, well, who said that? Uh, it's just been I out there that. for a while. I'm not going to go into details. It's close hold OPSEC information. But like yourself, uh, some of our dearly departed uh, are not so dearly departed. They have a vested emotional, spiritual interest in what's going on here and what's going on with us. So this yeah. notion that, oh, Barbie just being tormented throughout eternity, that's complete nonsense. No, I mean, it was always love. It's always seemed like it was those who who loved us most that will come to help because it's that part that is eternal that will come through. But I think that she did see some things that were disturbing that are that are start probably starting to be seen. And um, I suppose in in the darker element of some of the hybridization programs where, and I know you've seen this years ago, even, even Dr. David Jacobs wrote about it, where a certain type of hybrid would, would basically have a psychopathic narcissistic type of quality in their personality structure. Okay. And so they're basically run by the consciousness of those beings. And they, they kind of have that feel about them. Although I think that people can recover from the kinds of trauma that may show the same kinds of personality styles. Um, so I think there is hope for people who do have complex trauma where let's say they, they just, they have a narcissistic personality, but they would have to recognize it and admit it. And most of those people don't usually get well. And then they would be the kind to just kind of stay away from. And I think that Barbie saw some of this happening when she called it the breeding out of love program. And then now fast forward, <clears throat> when we look at the, the gene deletion programs and some of these uh, medical experiments that are being foisted upon people through deceit, the VMAT2 gene, and there's, I think there's two others. There's two deletions plus another one, which is to create the, the toxin that's, that's basically harming people. Um, but the one that is, it takes away the frontal lobe capacity of reasoning and I don't know if empathy and then the VMAT2 gene, which is what might associate with spirituality and religious propensity. So if those things are driven out of someone, that would be like, um, you know, breeding out the love program or, or turning people into more easily manipulated vessels for possession. Okay, so absolutely, it would create yeah. a vacuum that would allow these supernatural forces to come in. But because I've yeah. talked about it a lot, the frontal lobe is yes. the impulse control network, which is why so many narcissists and serial murderers, etc., simply are lacking in a frontal lobe capacity because genetically they were never meant to have a frontal lobe, they were supposed to be impulsive, sadistic, like right? sewer scum, right? Yeah, and there's an there's a element of perversion, I think, that happens over time, let's say maybe if somebody decides to do blood rituals and, you know, sell their soul to the devil or whatever it is that there's a certain switching that takes place in their biochemistry that switches on genes that basically compel more and more perversions that they kind of can't control. And, and I really do believe that there's a, there's a frequency consciousness element, and then there's a true genetic um, code so that if the consciousness is maintained at a certain level, it can activate those, those corrupted genes. Or it maybe they won't activate if your consciousness is more purified, then those basically will be neutralized or looped out. And that's precisely why Hollywood, uh, 
the media, the school system promotes all this Babylonian uh, abomination crap, all the gender bending, all the the uh, pedo child grooming that's going on. For, for example, yeah. uh, it just shows you how evil uh, Google and, and YouTube are. This is probably going to lead to a strike on me, which is fine. I've got these other platforms set up, right? Thank God, huh? Yeah. But, you know, uh, but like, for example, uh, if, if a kid is uh, looking up like SpongeBob or looking up some well known cartoons or animated uh, shows on YouTube, what they'll do is in the sidebar, they'll have all of these. Uh, videos of of sometimes children or sometimes adults and children giving free advertising for toys, whether it's SpongeBob toys or or um, you know in Australia there's a very popular children's called cartoon called Bluey, you know about this blue um, animated dog, right? But yeah. what they do is they in the sidebar they have all these. Um, kids playing with stuff versions animated like, like toys basically of of these animated figures but when you know i've heard this from parents i've checked it out for myself but when you scrutinize see it's very easy for the kid to go from oh you work yeah you sound good now it's very easy for the kid to be watching say um an episode a, a cartoon and then his attention is drawn to the side over here he scrolls up and down and he, and he plugs into a certain video and it starts out as just kids playing with these figurines, but then it starts taking a very dark turn after a while. You know, next thing you know, they're talking about, you know, you're seeing kids floating around on big air mattress pizzas in, in um, you know, in swimming pools. And then, uh, you know, the kids being asked by an adult off off camera, how much are you going to sell your pizza for? Oh, no, ten dollars is not enough. You got to sell your pizza for a thousand dollars. And it's all dark and satanic. And and see, wow. and, and that's how they that's how evil they are. Yeah. See, well, I think, um, What's that? I think you're up, but there's something that I guess this was it's a life lesson for me. And I think for many of us in this era that. Um, we need to know the level of corruption and, quote, evil that is happening in order to create a solution and, and a resilience to that so that um, we don't become corrupted and end up being harmed or consumed by this form of evil. So I think that, you know, we want to think positive and we want to do the good Buddhist practice and all that. But I think if there's if there's not a discernment and then there's a kind of lackadaisical enabling through thinking that you can only you only have to focus on one thing to be spiritually positive and ascend and all this stuff. But if it's if there's a level of lack of purity of perception, there's an enabling process that's going on that's enabling the predators and the narcissists and the psychopaths and the spiritual deceivers. And I've seen that the level of enabling is one of the biggest reasons why. It is so profoundly here in this world that the enabling and the allowance of corruption due to either the lack of perception or or um, narratives which would make us conditioned to be like, oh, well, let's just give him the benefit of the doubt. Or, well, well, you know, he can't help it when he's angry. You know, that's just how he is. Don't get him mad and tiptoeing around the narcissist or the social narcissist or the, you know, the big hoo-ha who's a bully on the playground, but you can't say anything because, you know, you'll get in trouble. So our society has conditioned us to enable predators and enable narcissists and all that stuff. So I think that's my biggest le lesson in life, even as a woman, that I was conditioned to enable um, narcissists and think, well, it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay for females and it's not okay for males. Well, so whenever I see that now, I just get so, I get so triggered and I want to say something. I want to say, you know, that is not okay. Is. That's enabling great evil to infect entire cities. And entire cities can be destroyed by a few like really, really good double agents. No, that's just, right. And yeah. for example, what you described, how, narcissism and uh, 
acquiescing and enabling narcissistic abuse in, in all its forms has also gone from the family unit, extended, extended family environment to the big screen, the TV. So when you have these uh, politicians, news presenters, et cetera, acting in bullying, gaslighting fashion, and again, the target audience is simply not aware that this is being done to them because they've been conditioned to enable and acquiesce to, because of the school system, the Marxist uh, control system, the Babylonian school system. So when they watch it on TV and they're, they're being psychologically abused and they don't even realize it, right? Uh, it's, it's just par for the course. It's what they're accustomed to. This is what they're habituated to accepting as normal, but now it's happening on a global planetary scale. It's and a normalization, you know, and normalization. Then the other thing too is that I've noticed that the more lethal, like in terms of the more lethal, like we always think of the, you know, the overt malignant narcissist who's like the obvious blow it case where you, like anybody could tell like, oh, he's a bad guy. Like, you know, the, the mafia bully criminal that's like obvious archetype. But in reality, the ones that are more dangerous are the ones who are pretending to be nice and they're a little more covert or they're pretending to be spiritual guides and channelers. And, and those are the ones that can cause the greatest kind of ensnarement and, and uh, entrapment of spiritual, uh, what do you call it? It's a slavery that I've noticed and even in my experience. And, and now I know why even in some of these even biblical scriptures, which they're not the only belief system that were so harsh with, um, you know, whenever there was, one of these in your midst, do not, do not associate with them. Do not allow them in your family. Do not intermarry with them. Uh, you know, the parable of the wheat and the tares. When you allow yeah. them to come in and, you know, sully your soil and start sprouting up and there's these toxic weeds all over the place, that's a perfect metaphor for these yeah. toxic, dysfunctional, reptilian controlled families, right? And I think that, you know, the good people will try to like, you know, we always try to understand him and, you know, like the good enabler who's always trying to be the healer to try to understand the narcissist. And he really is good. And he's just been injured as a child, but in reality, there's nothing you can do with someone who's made the choice to be a predator, to be a manipulator, to be a cheater, to be a liar, no matter how hard their childhood was, they've made the choice and they won't change. And, and it's like, there's so many people who are basically sacrificed and destroyed because they wanted to try to understand the narcissist and help him. And you just get, you know, destroyed. You know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just, I see so much of it. I have to say something. Well, well yes. I mean, uh, you know, it's easier for me, you know, Scorpio dragon mentality that I have that, okay, um, they were allowed one strike. <laughs> they had their one strike. Get the F out of my life, right? That's my attitude because my people pleasing days are over because I went through that phase of <laughs> low self worth, low self esteem people pleasing doormat mm -hmm. not anymore too much water has passed under the bridge too much crap we had endured and you know we were talking and we're not going to mention any names because you were talking uh, in general terms a moment ago about so many people in our field and in tangential uh, fields somewhat related to our own that pass themselves off as healers as as insiders as having uh, some kind of deep woo-woo knowledge about a lot of these issues that, and these are life and death issues. I mean, now what we've said all along and what Barbie and others and Candy were talking about years ago about this is, this is a struggle for our souls. It's not just our mortal coils that is, uh, you know, hanging into balance. It's our souls. And now when they're going on TV and saying, oh, we, we can hack, you know, the, the human body, uh, you know, free will, the soul, all that's out the window now because we're taking over. When, when they're openly saying that, right? You know, this is the, this henchman of Klaus Schwab going around saying this. When, when they're saying something that we knew way back then, but people didn't realize that it really was a struggle for the souls. And you have all these milk toast Christians, right? Um, who they're, you know, they got their entity infested pastors and they're just being misled and, uh, you know, stampeded off the cliff essentially. Like the spiritual warrior Christians know there's there's something to this 
wickedness and, and, and spiritual darkness in high places. This is not just a battle of flesh and blood. I mean, yeah, it, I mean, I've seen this. With, I mean, yeah, it's um, I guess I'm just getting more clear on when there is complex trauma and unresolved issues. And sometimes the entities come in through trauma. We know that. And then they may pass themselves off as a Christian or a this or a that. It doesn't matter. But if they have unresolved stuff, oftentimes, you know, how you can tell if there's a demon <laughs> um, is like, the, you know, they act all nice and stuff and they ask you questions, and they get you vulnerable. And then there's a lot of compliments. And then they come in just at the right time to give you a stab of an insult to cause doubt or to insult you or to put you down and to make them better. And to it, it's it's something that that happens consistently with a certain personality type, and they may they may have psychic abilities, they may have you know claim to be a Christian, but there's still something inside them that's operating at that level, and and it's obvious. Like actually, I saw a reptilian um, shape shifting eye phenomena not too long ago, and it, and it surprised me. <laughs> Because that person's not necessarily um, bad or have any bad vibes or anything. It's just that it was so clear the, that their the eyes the the went vertical. Or they yeah, it, it was color. No, it, it went vertical and in consistency for a long enough period of time that I knew, and more than once, that this was not, you know, an optical the light, optical illusion. Yeah. yeah, this was like, oh my god, I can't believe. It. Like it was as if the entity wanted me to know he's showing himself. And I don't know if others, you know, I, I didn't stop to question, you know, if others noticed this, but it was definitely let itself be known to me what was operating inside someone, you know, and it's kind of frustrating when, <laughs> when you see these things and you know, they're operating, but you can't really say anything because, you know, it's not your thing to, unless somebody wants help, um, you just don't go there, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just had to mention it because I, I saw it so clearly and you know, I hadn't seen that in many years, actually. I mean, I've seen it on videos and stuff and what people have told me. And, but that was like, wow. You when know. you see it in your face and the pupils go vertical yeah. and the ener there's an energetic shift. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's what it is. It's a they live moment. Uh, it's subtly and not so subtly, the ent entity or entities working through the individuals, letting you know, hey, we're here. This he, yeah. he or she is one of ours. <laughs> and at yeah, any yeah, moment, it's like they let themselves be known. It's almost like a mockery, or a, yes, or maybe they have to let themselves reveal themselves. Like sometimes that happens when they're in the presence of somebody. Um, they have to show themselves, or they can't help it, or they can't help. Like I don't know, like. Some reptilians, I remember hearing this from somebody who I've interviewed, that if she pissed off the, um, the reptilian host who was a hybrid host, then that host would just automatically shift eyes and she'd just see her like shift right there. And, um, and it would like the, the anger would cause them to, to not be able to maintain their, uh, their physical appearance. Yes, yes, that'll happen. I've seen that personally where uh, the morph, the shape shift occurs and then out of them, out of their mouths come all this malevolence and these dire threats and uh, because they have such contempt for the human race. And when I've dealt with them, I've talked about this before, but it bears repeating. When I'm talking to an individual that has either allowed or has been overpowered momentarily by this entity talking through them, I just let it wash over me. I just, okay, we're going to go through about 40 seconds of, of verbal abuse and threats. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. Maybe after that, we can have somewhat of a cordial conversation, but it's always going to be tinged with arrogance and, and yeah. disdain, you know, on the part of the entity you know, and then intermix every now and then with another threat. Uh, yeah, right? it's amazing. So, I mean, I've seen this enough times to know when something's operating. And I, I, I really don't think I don't know if it's it's on the awareness of the individual, but it it tends to be synchronistic with like let's say your own awareness or awakening to getting to some really deeper truths about yourself or or the alien thing or let's say if you're in a project and then something comes along um and and it just injects its you know its thing and then you know that's part of what's directing that person but they may not know it they may not even know it but it's just the pattern you when you start to recognize the pattern for what it is yes 
And and you know, quick point before uh, we round out this first segment of a very once again a very interesting discussion. Is it any wonder, any surprise that so many people that are in our field or again in tangential fields that are somewhat related to our own, that so many of them have this uh, imitation human spirit that comes through them every once in a while. Uh, people would be shocked that some of the biggest names in our field, they, they are adepts, they are warlocks. They are serial astral rape toys that systematically, serially, astrally rape women. And then they gaslight them the next morning, right? Yeah. Now, some, some of the oh, biggest names, is. not just one, no yeah. number, a number. Oh, I know. Uh, this, is, this is why it's difficult, I think. I mean, as a counselor, I work with confidentiality. That's the most important thing and the safety of the individuals. But if, if publicly things were known that are known in private, we would have a different worldview. People would have a different worldview entirely. Yes. Because of what's really operating. And, um, and it's very politically incorrect and unpopular. And it could make you look like an absolute nutcase if you said what you really knew. Yes. And what you really experienced about people who are adored by thousands. Oh, yes. Adored, literally adored. Like there's this mesmerizing enchantment process that Barbie used to talk about, right? That we yes. see this and how defensive they become when they're idol, the, the person that they worship and the person that probably has um, exerted some mesmerizing huchiku on them, right? When, you know, all these accusations and aspersions start going around about the person that they uh, uh, adore, and then they, then hordes, especially women, become all defensive about, uh, you know, the individual that's that's being, you know, accused of all this stuff. But where there's smoke, there's fire. And it goes back to the whole concept of, of uh, discernment. And one of the key points, and when you were talking about how narcissistic behavior eventually manifests itself, and one of the things that uh, is a red flag for me is the avoidance. Mm. These people claim to be healers, therapists, uh, re resolving uh, buried trauma. But when you raise certain key issues, reptilians, SRA, coven abuse, et cetera, ooh, see, that's avoidance. And then you start mentioning going into details about my lab stuff, right? And then they try to big shot you and then, you know, misdirect and avoid, okay? Yeah. The avoidance thing to me is a red flag. You know, why don't they want to talk about that? Uh, we're, we're adults here, right? And people like you and I who have been around for a while and seen a lot of this, yeah. you know, develop, you know, these networks and, and these, um, so many of these posers out there just, just come out of left field. And then, you know, when, and what really irks me, and I know it irks you too, is we get a lot of the people who had been previously misused and cast off by these posers out there. So um, these yeah. people, these people go to them for help, and then they get they, first they get the avoidance, then the gaslighting, the narcissistic abuse. You're unworthy. Get away from me. You're wasting my time. You're a parasite, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so oftentimes, what happens is these people eventually come around to us because you know, mm -hmm. well, you know, I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time, but something kept yeah. pre preventing me. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, there's me. all this stuff about twin flames and. You know, like if they don't go along with the narrative, like people have bad mouthed me and my work because, oh, it's just too negative. And, you know, you're not being spiritually evolved enough. And, and I hear that, that patronizing new age twatism. You know what I, I call it? There's an arrogance in it that has a stench. And I, I think an it's, energetic it's, stench. That's a very good point. Yeah. And it's, uh, I think it's the, the, what do they call the white checkerboard square Luciferian infection of many, many groups. Because if, if someone was truly enlightened and ready to ascend like Jesus, they, I think their qualities of compassion and their quality of purity of perception and their abilities to do things like I've observed and actually some close teachers of mine would be apparent. But I think people normalize um, some behaviors, which really, to me, are like, they're not enlightened. Let's just no. put it that way. They're not enlightened. Well, we reached the end of a fascinating discussion. Had a little bit of interference there, but the reception has gotten a lot better since. Uh, 
and you can find Evie's work. We'll have our her links uh, on our website and our dedicated YouTube channel and other platforms we now have. You can go on our website and you can see, you know, in the event at some point that, you know, our show is banished from, uh, you know. Super I know, all my emails never get to me. So I, I have actually an Alien Love by Telegram channel, but I only post things and it's not for exchange. But yeah. if someone wants to email me, it's e it's easier just to email me directly, elorgan yeah. at email.com, because a lot of my things just don't reach me. So I just wanted to put that out there that I am going to start a group for um, anomalous trauma, where we're going to do a significant part of it will be dream work, but also complex PTSD recovery and how to work with that. So I just wanted to put that out there now. And that's elorgan at gmail.com. And yes. to our um, viewers and listeners out there, if you like what we do, if you believe in what we do, please go to the cosmic switchboard.com, sign up and become a member, and we'll see you at the uh, start of the member segment.